and he's such a wonderful father to speak yeah. to. And so there's always joy when we fellowship and commune with the Most High God. Yeah. And just in case you're wondering what it's about, let me just give you a little insight and then our opening thoughts are going to come from our minister. We thank God. You know, the first year we came together, and this was a vision of our sisters, Fellowship um, at the time they weren't leaders, but they were giving forward their thoughts, and it was such a blessing to right. run with it. And you know, the first year we looked at the fact that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Amen. The second year we looked at the fact that we could come together from different places, different assemblies, and come together with a united prayer and praise attack. Amen. And we know the power of prayer and praise. And so we launch an attack against the adversary. And we pray for our communities and we pray for our young people. And you know, God just led us out in prayer. And last year we looked at the topic beyond the veil and began to examine our place and position in the Lord. And this year we have a wonderful topic, which is our uh, the need for a purpose heart. And we thank God that we have a challenge today which will um, touch our own spirit. Not a time for us to look at anybody else, but to examine ourselves. And this is such a powerful topic when we think about prayer. Because truly, if our heart isn't right, Amen, Amen church. Amen. If our heart isn't right, and so I'm not examining anyone, but I'm standing exposing my life before God. And as we pray, we will still pray for our community. Amen. And as the Lord leads us out in prayer, it's a time when we join with others. And so it's not any one person leading it, but we can go through our different assemblies and our visiting brethren. We'll all have an opportunity to share. And can I ask you to be mindful one of another so that if you're asked to pray or to lead prayer or to give a thought, if you can take about five minutes and just allow the Lord's Spirit just to lead you as we share. And so we're going to move into our first thought. I don't know if you can press this one. Our minister Carmen Scoffrey is coming to open up this wonderful topic that God laid on her heart. And it is um, taken from, first of all, Isaiah 14. But she will lead you. She has much in store to share for us. God bless you. Praise God. Our minister, as she comes. We're going to encourage everybody.
what makes the difference. That's why we are new creation this morning. Because Christ has touched us. Thank you, Lord. I welcome everybody in this place, every brothers, sisters, each one of you in your respective place in the body. Every man has his place in God. No one can take your place, and you certainly can't take mine. For we were in his eternal purpose that we should be completed in him who is the head, wonderful God. Amen. I love Jesus. And the only way we can love him more and more is through two things prayer and the word. Amen. Thank God this morning for the topic we've got here. The uh, worship to me, yes, because one leads to the other. You can't pray without worship, and you can't worship without prayer. But it's all interwoven, and it makes one beautiful experience. Who knows the experience, knows the experience. But this moment we're going to talk about, I wouldn't be long and short, so about my three minutes or two. But the word says, the need for a purposed heart. It's not something you might or should or might get to it. There is a need for it. Amen. It's a necessity that you and I must have a purposed heart when it comes to the things of the Almighty God. Amen. You can have a purpose according to the flesh. Yes. But we're talking about the purpose that is in line with the purpose of God. And the Word of God tells us that without counsel, purposes are disappointed. My Lord. My Lord. Come on now. But God says, by of me, counsel is from Him. Another scripture says that without the, first of all it says, uh, every purpose, again, is established by counsel. Every purpose. And the counsels of God is sure. What he has purpose, nobody can disannul it. Nobody can stop it from coming to pass. We, let's read, um, I won't go to Isaiah because I'm sure we will do. But it says in Isaiah, I will, um, verse 26, this is the purpose that is purpose of, on the all earth. And this is the hand that is stretched out upon all nations. For the Lord of hosts, let's get who's talking here, the Lord of the armies of angels, the Lord of the armies of angels, the Lord of hosts is speaking to us and he wants us to continue his purpose in the earth. And what is his purpose? To break the shackles and the chains that bind men in sin. Is that right? Amen. Are we saved just to enjoy him? It's a warfare. Amen. It's a warfare. Nehemiah was purposed in his heart to cleanse the temple and build the wall. Amen. And what happened? God helped him. That's right. Amen. We have help. Amen. On our side. Just quickly to um, meet with a fellow believer in our little break time. She was asking me for prayer for a specific purpose. And as we parted, I said something to her, one thing, please don't try to work it out. If you're praying, if I'm praying, don't try to work it out. Let Jesus work it out. Because he can work it out. If we can't work it out, we come with what we call preconceived ideas. But we can't work it out. We can't work it out. And the small sense of God, I want us to pray for the body of Christ. In the way that, you know, many are giving up their purpose. Yes. You know, I believe that the key to a successful Christian life is to purpose in your heart that you are serving the Lord. Yes. Yes. Everything else must come second. Yes. Yes. The other day I received a dinner invitation with some friends. They wanted me to go for dinner. But I rang them and I said, I can't go for dinner. Because Thursday is my prayer night. I'm not giving up Amen. on what I have promised to the Lord. Jesus and I will come willingly with you because I like their company. They're good friends. But I'm not giving up Thursday night to go
for the body of Christ this morning that they will hold fast yes. to the purpose of serving the Lord. Because it states clearly here that he wants us to be circumcised in order that we may love him and we may live. Amen. Who wants to die? Who wants to be a walking dead person? I don't. I want to walk with life. So let us pray. Let us pray for ourselves. Give up the I and let Jesus do it. Give up the me and let God make the way. Give up the I thought and let Jesus do it. Say to God, this is a serious thing. Let Jesus do it. Let Jesus fix your life. He says, I will do it. I will circumcise your heart. Men can take your heart out. Give you a new heart to pump your blood. You live in the natural life. But only Jesus can circumcise your heart. So you can live in the spirit. You can walk in the newness of life. 
grace and your love. Have you given a portion? Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Praise the Lord. Now we just focus on the word to keep. What that means. And when I look at it, it means to God. To keep out. So we have to keep out everything that comes to defile. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. We have to keep out everything that is of the devil and doesn't come from God. All right.
the Lord this morning that he is the God who searches the heart. Bless the Lord, he knows everything. There is nothing that can be hidden from him. Even the very things that we may think and think that God does not know, he knows. If we speak of it, he knows. And if we don't, he knows. And I thank God this morning that I'm in the right place this morning to hear the word of God. In a place where if, my, if I have done anything that, we are, that, are, that is not right, praise be to God, I can ask the Lord to search yes. my heart. You know, David said, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. And sometimes the spirit is not right. You know, there are many things that we do. And, uh, you know, it's just not right in the presence of God. You know what? I'm looking at the scripture this morning. You know, when my sister came up and started speaking. You know, when I was told this morning, everything that I thought at that time would pray about, somebody came out and somebody did it. But this morning, you know, the scripture said, Oh, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Praise God, it said, It is like oil that flows. Praise God. Oil is something that it doesn't sink, it swims. Praise the name of the Lord. And the love of God is something that must flow. It's in the body of Christ. Unity brings strength. And we know that this is a time when we need strength to stand. We need strength to speak the word of God. But the strength has to come from God. It's not our own strength. We can't stand in our own strength. If we stand in our own strength, we will fail. And now is not the time for the believer to fail. Now is the time for the believer to stand firm. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, in our olden days in Jamaica, it was that we must stand flat footed. We must be sure that our anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Jesus Christ is the rock this morning. And he said, upon this rock I build my church. He said, the gates of hell shall not prevail. And if, if we have to be united, praise the name of the Lord. You know, I just read a scripture here in, it was in but it, it was saying that it's not, it's just easy. Christ was saying it's not what we eat that defines us. He said when we eat, it does what it has to do. All the nutrients, it's taken out and it's going into the body and it does what it has to do. Then it's passed through the trunk. But the words that we speak, the things that we speak, those are the things that define us. And this morning, this is my prayer that we will all pray together. That we will walk together in love. We will love our brothers and our sisters. Love is of God. We can't say we love God and we hate our brothers and our sisters, not even our enemies. The Bible said, not your enemies. Feed your enemies. And sometimes those are some things we think it's so hard to do. Unforgiveness defines us. You know, constantly we have to pray and ask God, help us, Lord, to forgive others. And as, as we forgive others, the Bible says, much will be forgiven of us. This morning we are going to pray for the unity of the body of Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. We are going to pray that the love of God will abide within our hearts. That our hearts will be clean. That we can speak in righteousness. We can speak in love. That we will be able to go forth and declare the word of God. Because without the truth in our heart, we go out, we will stutter, we will fail. And when we do invite others to church, they won't come. Because some people can really feel when the believer. Are you real or not? Yeah. 
Whether you hate me or not. So this morning we are just going to stand and we are going to pray for love, unity, forgiveness, and reality. Praise the name of the Lord.
touch somebody with the love of God this evening. We're not going to stay too long. It's about five minutes and then we'll have greetings from our apostle afterwards. And then we're going to have those um, quick thoughts that you're sharing with us. I've got about 20 minutes or so before the final speaker. Are you going to let me start? I prefer if you did. Praise God. <laughs> Let us open up ourselves to one another. Get up, get up, and give us share some love.
upon my divinity and my humanity. I will build the church. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against her. So with all the mighty testimonies of David, of Samuel, and all the great men, it was Christ. Amen. It was not their greatness. Amen. It was the greatness of Christ. Amen. Amen. It was He yeah. that delivered them from all the powers of the heaven. Yeah. 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 Because I've been in some because I want to just take two verse more here today. And this is what we're in Samuel. It's just in the sorry, this is over in the south of Solomon. And it says, chapter 6, verse 4. Uh, yes, it said, Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Tarzan, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as in harmony with banners. Verse 10. So she was beautiful then. Who is she that looketh for it as the morning? This is God's love song. Amen. Uh, that is like the moon. Fair as the moon. Clear as the sun. And terrible as the heart of my fathers. They had to all this no religion. They didn't have to. All they had to do was to go to the priest and the priest was shut up and start a bending baby while he's in there. God would come to him and take his leprosy. They couldn't do that. And so in the time of famine also, many did not receive a miracle, but just one woman received a miracle. Because God couldn't find anybody to believe him. And sometimes we get to the place where we don't believe God anymore. Yeah. Mm. Because the Bible says, oh, that's those that trust in other gods yeah. shall be ashamed. Oh God. You can't mix God with witchcraft.
Praise be to God. God said, He will provide. But we think, my God, just help you. God doesn't need my help, your help, anybody's help. Amen. We need His help. Praise God. Praise God. And you've got to go and see Auntie Mary, Auntie Agnes, whoever. There are other days to go. But my mind is purpose. I'm going to serve God. That's right. 28 years I said to the wife, get in the car. The car's busted. The car got no petrol. The car got no heater. Get in the car. Because I'm going. It's too this, it's too that. Some people go around the world with no licks. Yeah. Wow! Yeah. My God. Yeah. Oh, boy, my skin. I'm like this. I'm trusting God. Yeah. I want to go to your house, Lord. I want to give in your presence. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Mick Jagger wrote so many years ago. I used to follow him, you know. I wrote his song. But you know what? He sung a song. I can't get him. No satisfaction. And still, no satisfaction.
that the Lord will continue to lead them. Amen. Because Joseph was upset. And sometimes we get upset because it's not the person we think. Yeah. But God knows who's your yeah. right. So we're going to pray for the leaders. Yeah. Amen. That the Lord will continue to lead them. Yeah. That the work of God continue. can continue and flourish. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus. So let us stand on our feet. Amen. 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 We have our pastor here. We have evangelists. We have prophets. Yes. We have deacons. Yes. But there is a sister. And there is a brother that the Lord wants to bring. Yes. To be a leader. Yes. Yeah, hallelujah. So let us invite God to have his choice. Yes. And not our choice. Yes. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's just bow our heads. And let's pray in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, the right God of God. That I will die. And we could see that in Eli, he had lost 
He's lost out somewhere. And so he misunderstood her groanings. Sometimes we are misunderstood, amen? amen? When we're in the house of the Lord, crying unto the Lord. Yeah. She was misunderstood. Yeah. She didn't know that she was crying out for Eli's successor. Yeah. She didn't know that she was crying out for someone who would come and change the face of the prophets and the priests in Israel. She didn't know that she was crying out for a change in Israel. The desire of her heart was for a man-child. And she was crying out for Samuel who was going to come and change the entire face of Israel. A mighty man of God. A man who would come with an assignment because his mother took the time to cry out before God. When we take the time to present our hearts before God, there must be a change. Something must happen when our hearts connect with the Almighty God. When my soul cries out to Him, when I seek Him early, when I seek Him late, when I seek Him when no one else understands what I'm going through, something has got to change. Pastor come, that's not enough. We want to see the pastor come and pray. 
So the great woman of Susan wanted to see the man of God come back to the house. And there he was. He went back and revived that son. Saints of God, we are living in time where so many things are happening around us. But we need to know who we believe. Amen. We need to know who we trust. Yes. We need to reach that greater height and deeper depth in Christ Jesus. Yes. That we will call upon your name. Deliverance will come in Jesus' name. Amen.
his house to be blessed forever. And we are in that forever together. And peace be unto you, my sister. Peace be unto you, my brother. You see, the Spirit is taking us above what we do on a regular basis. Everybody comes to something supernatural today.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I was thinking about the word, some of the words, um, the word need, I think it was mentioned earlier. It says a requirement, something that is necessary, um, something that is deemed vital Amen. or important. And then it says for a purposed heart, the word purpose. And it says to set as an aim, an intent, a goal. And in this context, we're talking about a determination or a resolve. So it is vital that I have a resolve, a, a heart that's determined to do. So we're talking about in the context of prayer and touching God. So if you'll turn with me please to Psalms 57. Praise the Lord. Psalm 57, and we're going to read verse 7 and verse 2. Okay, but we'll start with verse 7. Psalm 57 and verse 7, and it says, My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. And verse 2, I will cry unto God most high. Unto God that performeth yes. all things for me. Amen. So we're talking about being purpose, that there is a need. Yes. It is vital that we have that determination when it comes to the things of God, when it comes to prayer, when it comes to sacrifice, when it comes to living holy. I am determined, my mind is made up to do. Yes. Now the psalmist here says, that my heart is fixed. Amen. We've been talking about the heart a lot this today. And something that's fixed is fastened. It's well attached. It's secure. It's rendered stable or permanent. It says having enough of something necessary or wanted. And in the context of something that's repaired or mended. So he says, my heart is fixed. Yes. When a heart is fixed on God. You know, like one time there was, um, I, in my younger days, I put some stickers on my mirror. And these things just would not come off. Yes. For love nor money, they were not shifting. Yes. And they were fixed, they were attached, they were unmovable. When it comes to a heart for God, we have to have that same attitude that I am fixed, I am unmovable. And nothing can separate me from the love of God. So he says, my heart is fixed, oh God. And he repeats it, my heart is fixed. Alright. And many times things come to unfix us. Someone spoke about keeping the heart clear and keeping it clean. Many things come to unfix our heart. But the psalmist said, my heart is fixed, oh God. My heart is fixed on what? My heart is fixed on you. There's a, a phrase or a song, I'm not sure, it says, stuck on you. Stuck on you. But the psalmist says, my heart is fixed. Yes, that's a great He's a performer. 
And I don't mean in the context of putting on a show or an act. But I'm talking about He is the God that does. He is the God that can. He is the God that is able. So it says, my heart is fixed. This is the condition. For if we are going to have God to perform on my behalf, on our behalf, I'm sure we're familiar with the story that he was distressed. 
that the wall of the city was broken down and the house of God, everything was just in ruin and he was distressed and he left his job as the king's cupbearer to go and make a change, to build. And there came a time when he was ridiculed by his enemies. And verse 2, chapter 2, verse 20, and it says that he's talking to Sambalat um, and Tobiah. And he says, Then answered I them and said unto them, The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore we his servants will arise and build. But ye have no portion, no right, no memorial yes. in Jerusalem. And Nehemiah was so purposed yes. in the rebuilding of the wall. When the enemies came and they were, you know, mocking him, taking the mickey out of him and his work, they were ridiculing his purpose. And many a times we let what people say deter us from our purpose. Well, Sister Samso said X, Y, Z. So, you know what, let me just put it down in the first place. It was never a purpose. When something is purpose, it don't matter what anyone says, this thing is in me. It is in me. It said, you know, Jeremiah said, you know what? I just feel like the fire of God. It just shut up in my bones. I can't keep it quiet. I can't put it on the back burner because I am purpose. Nehemiah, he had his good job. He's so purpose, so fixed. On God. He will perform, he will accomplish that which he said. So he said, therefore, we his servants will arise. When it comes to purpose, it's all well and good, God prospering and doing things for you, but there is your part to play. There is our part to play. So he said, we will arise and build. And many a time, the purpose has just been dropped to the floor, buried, forgotten, and just kind of back there somewhere. But when God has purposed you, God promised that he will prosper you. Now it's time to arise and
what took place at that particular place, etc. But this is what he said. Not only did he say, you have nothing to do with this, no portion. So you have no right in this. He said, you know what? I'm not even going to remember you when this thing is finished. Your name won't even get a mention. And many a times God has to work on our memory. Many a times the devil robbed us. He beat us up. He put us down. And even though we've been forgiven and we are free, but it's the memories that haunt us. It's the memory of the thing. God, I know you forgive me, but every time I lift my hands, I remember. Every time I see that person, I remember. But he said, you know what? No memorial. Be fruitful, multiply, subdue, replenish 
That was God giving them everything at their fingertips. He's, God didn't come and say, well, I think you should name that a zebra and a giraffe. That was left to Adam. Yeah. He had the rights. Yeah. We are like God. The glory of God should be seen yeah. in us. Yeah. Let me tell you what glory is in my definition. Glory, the sun in and of itself, is full of light. But the moon doesn't have any light of its own. The moon reflects the light of the sun. So every time the sun looks at the moon, the sun says, that's me, you know. That's me. Every time a son, a, a father, looks at his son who looks just like him, he looks at him and says, that's me. My genes are in it. I see myself in you. So when God looks at us, we are, this is what he says, that's me. I see myself in my child, in their behavior, in their attitude, in their purpose. If you want to know about purpose, just look at God. Nothing was by luck, chance or accident. He spoke and it was done. So what does that mean? I can speak and it can be done. Jesus. 
Jesus. God bless you. Come. You see, in the West, we come. 
come to church to be entertained by the preacher yes. Yes. or to be entertained by the musician yes. or to be entertained by somebody even these days they have people dancing yes. 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 but it's the open gather together not to be entertained but to
encouragement. Amen. Circumcision said, cut off the fleshly desire and turn your complete dependence on the Lord. Whatever you need is in Jesus. Give God some unrestrained and crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. 